Ronel Blanco threw a no-hitter. Mike Trout hit one that hasn't landed yet. There's pit pitcher carnage everywhere. And we got a lot more to talk about here on the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Erickson here with Fred Zinke. Welcome to the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Uh, our podcast is brought to you by the good folks at Rival Fantasy, Vivid Seats, and Home Run Forecast. Welcome back, Home Run Forecast. You heard from them last year. So, a uh, lot going on in the va- fantasy baseball world, including our first no hitter of the year last night. Ronel Blanco blanked the uh, Toronto Blue Jays, uh, much to Fred's chagrin, I'm sure. Uh, so let's just jump right out on that. 30 year old Ronel Blanco starts throwing more changeups, throws a no hitter. Great success story, huh? It is if you're not a Blue Jays fan and you didn't have to sit through that. I only sat through five or six innings and then I gave up. So oh. since, since Bowden Francis pitched so poorly, was he in any of your lineups uh, last night? Tout Wars. Uh, El Tout Wars. Of course he was there. I can't bench. I can't bench a two start starter in, in Tout Wars, uh, even though they're two bad starts, but I still did. I still started him. I, I have him in two leagues and I benched him in both. One is Tout Wars draft and hold. But see, you're I, a mixed league. That's different. Uh, it is, except in draft and hold. Like I was really tempted to use them because sometimes later in the season you kind of run out of starting pitchers. Yeah. So I was in, I was tempted, but I just decided not to. Which at least for one start, we'll see where the second one goes. First start, it turned out to be the right idea. But let's not let's get back to Mr. Blanco, who Blancoed the Blue Jays last night. Yes, boy, are you, I'm, am I turning you into me? <laughs> I love it. I love uh, it. We're, we're not even two minutes in, and I already have my first uh, dad pun yeah. of the night. Um, yeah. So I can tell you, okay, Jack Nicholson, Jeff, there, I can yeah. tell, I told you I had a Ronel Blanco story, which isn't that much of a story, but like a lot of people listening will be, be able to relate to this a little bit. So in Tout Wars draft, I kid you not. And people just have to take me at my word on this. Like, I don't come out looking that great in it. So like, I, so that you might as well, but I kid you not in round 50 of the draft and hold league. Oh, no. As we're going through round 48, 49, I don't have a ton of starters in that league. I got some good ones, but I don't have a ton mm-hmm. of starters. And some of the ones I picked are hurt, like on purpose. Scherzer, John Means, like guys I stashed. Mm-hmm. I picked Stash. Stash. That's right. Yes. Which you can do better in a draft and hold since you have so many players on your bench. Anyways, so I was really looking hard as we were getting in the late rounds of like, could I get anyone who might have a rotation spot? Right. And you can mm-hmm. see kind of where this is going. So, yeah. Um, I, but then, it, yeah, anyways, so I took, oh, what's his name from the Giants? Mason Black. I took him near the end because okay. he was like hovering before they signed Blake Snell. He was kind of hovering around being their fifth starter. And, anyways, when it came to round 50, I had two players in my queue and I couldn't decide which order to put them in. I had Emilio Pagan. Right. As a little bit of maybe he could be the Reds closer if something happened to Diaz at some point this year. Right. You get a stretch of of saves from him. And I had Ronel Blanco, who and this was like around March 18th or so. It was right before the Dodgers Padres games. So there was no buzz on him. But I had looked at the pot at the Astros depth chart. He was listed as their fifth started open the year. I'd done a little bit of reading on him and I was like, oh, one or the other, one or the other. And I ordered them Pagan Blanco and then. Todd Zola was really pushing us to get this draft done. So right. I, I made a statement that I would stay on autopilot probably in round 42 for the rest of the draft and just keep my queue filled and, and everything. So anyways, I was at work and I was like, you know what? I think I want to order them Blanco Pagan because I could really use one more starter. And I went in to order them and my auto pick had just gone by and I got Pagan. Oh, so, so I didn't get Blanco. And, but like, I think that's my first ever that is one. Only one I can remember my first ever round 50 regret in a draft and hold. I don't think I've ever had a round 50 regret before. And that day I was like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have gone on auto. We're in the last round. I should have just kept a close eye on it and really thought about it. But anyways, who knows? Maybe Pagan will end up getting me some saves at some point. Um, and I'm not confident that I would have started Blanco last night because his two step was the blue Jays, which I'm fine with. They don't hit mm-hmm. that well this year, but then the Rangers on the weekend. And, right. you know, like he has no track record. I'm not confident that it would have started on last night, but I do. That is, I do have Bowden Francis in that league. And I think I might've started them both 
to go for, you know, where you do that. Like I'll get a win for hopefully get a win from one of them. So even if I had like midweek moves, I'm still not certain I would start him at Texas on Sunday. I know. You know, that, know, that's how uh, I know him, at, him starting him in Francis last night would have been really risky because then, like you said, I would have had to start Blanco at Texas on Sunday. I would have had to start Francis in New York on Sunday, although I have looked ahead and thought that there's at least a chance because the Blue Jays have an off day that they start Barrios in New York. Right. On Sunday. I don't think they will, but there's at least a chance that they would since it's a divisional game and push Francis back. But anyways, there's my I, that's my first ever that I can remember 50th round like regret and i regretted it as soon as the draft ended and i was the second last pick in the draft because i was oh. second overall so anyways no one darn drafted. you auto pick so trying no, to do something no good for the good of the like, league yep yeah i can tell you quite confidently at tent wars draft and hold he was not in anyone's lineup for this no hitter but anyways the whole fantasy point of it is he is kind of interesting i think he'll be scooped up and he should be scooped, as long as the, the t- start start against texas is even respectable he'll get scooped up in every league this weekend and he should yeah. So, Starting pitching is hard to come by. Yeah, but Ronald Blanco is not a kid. He's 30 no, years old. This guy is not a prospect. That's right. Right. Uh, yeah. he, he wasn't even signed as a professional until age 22. That's way old for a yeah. prospect uh, to begin with there. He's been in AAA for three full seasons. Yeah, he he, he first hit AAA in 2019. You yeah. know, and then, yeah. you know, yeah. so it could have been longer, but they didn't have a season in 2020. Yeah. Uh, he never pitched more than six innings. Typically, he threw no more than 9% change-ups. Last night, he threw like 35% change-ups there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're looking at a change in pitch mix, which is intriguing to me. And the Jays were caught off guard. There were quotes after the game saying they weren't prepared for him to throw so many change-ups. Clearly, it's something he worked on in spring training, and it worked out. And that I love seeing that, that development happens. But the thing is, now teams are going to start scouting it. They're going to start watching video on that, trying to pick up tells, trying to pick up, you know, think – you know, pick up how he's throwing that change up. You know, it, it's one of those crazy things. I asked about this because they both train in Florida. In fact, pretty close to each other. Um, you know, the, the respective tra- uh, spring training facilities are really close to uh, each other. Um, like, did their scouts not get a chance to see him working on it? Did, was this something on the backfields? Was it something he used in games? I mean, it, it's it's one of those things like you always hear about velocity increases, but like working on a change up, working on a different pitch. That's harder to pick up on. We hear it occasionally in spring training, but usually it's not the changeup. No, that's true. Yeah, and well, it'll be interesting to see how he fares against, um, like you said, a Texas team on the weekend that can hit well and that will have a better idea of what's coming. I think yep. that will decide, even if he pitches, like I said, even if he's not great against Texas, just the lack of starting pitching, at least in 15-team leagues on waivers, I think he has to be scooped up, even if he just sits on your bench. Um right. But that'll decide, I think, whether the bid is significant or not. Um, interesting for him, his next start um, after the Texas road start on Sunday would be a Texas home start uh, next week. So I don't know if you really even want to use him next week. And the following week, his start would be a Braves home start. Even worse. I know. And then he goes to the Cubs the next week. So he's got a series. He's got three consecutive after this week. One, obviously these two, two start pitches. So he's got three consecutive one start weeks, Texas, Atlanta, and then at the Cubs, not the Cubs are awesome, but they're okay. And Chicago is not a great place to pitch, but anyways, I don't know how he'll come through that, but he'll be at least, I, like I say, I think every, in every 15 team league and probably in the twelves, like he's, he's worth putting on your bench to see what happens. Right. Let's talk about that Texas team. They just lost Josh Young yesterday. Uh, yeah. Fractured wrist. Had surgery already uh, today. Uh, he's going to be out six weeks. Keep in mind, he's also coming back from a fractured thumb, and he was on fire when he came mm-hmm. back too. That's the real, you know, that's the amazing thing. But this is a tough, uh, tough look for the Rangers. Tough break for the Rangers. Uh, literal tough break. Um, yeah, you know, I still think it's a, a lineup you're, you you kind of want to avoid. There, it's a loaded lineup there. Uh, Justin Foskey, any interest in him? Any interest in Ezekiel Duran, who's probably the guy that gets the most playing time as a result of that? Yeah, I would say probably more interest in Duran. I'm not sure what will happen with Foskey. Like, I looked at his minor league numbers. They're okay. Um, Nothing that makes me... I know he's their number five prospect right now. Um, So, you know, like, so there's something there, but... I don't think he's someone that I necessarily, well, I mean, we have the rest of the week now in NFBC style leagues to just to see how much he plays, but my more immediate interest is in Duran, who's 
not awesome, but I mean, last year, uh, 406 at bats, 14 homers and eight steals hit 276, like with, a, with a high 358 Babbitt. So I don't know if he's truly a 276 hitter, but if he could be a 250 hitter with a bit of power and a bit of, and a little, the odd steal, like, I think he could be like in a 15 team league. I think he could be usable. Yeah. That, to start. I don't, he doesn't, it doesn't really soften the blow for Josh Young owners, because like, that's not, he's not going to replace what you were hoping to get there. But third base is taking some hits between, between this injury and the Royce Lewis injury, DJ LeMay, who too, which is not, not a big injury, but it's just another guy from the pool. Like, like LeMay, he would have been the kind of guy that you could pivot to here that maybe you had on your bench or, or in a 12 might've been on the waiver wire. So yeah, Duran under those circumstances, uh, Duran's eligible at third short and outfield right now that makes him a little more appealing too yeah so you know Fossey is two percent rostered in the main event two okay. percent but lo- much like oswaldo cabrera who people are trying to pick up this past this past weekend doesn't currently qualify at third base so that right. that's you know Fossey is listed on in the nfbc at second base so even though he hasn't had any major league experience yet that's where you're going to be able to use him for a while and that makes it more complicated you know we, like you mentioned we lost lewis and we lost you know we, we've we're kind of struggling to find other guys that can be available for us there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, we're going to be picking up like Trey Limps- Lipscomb or tr- picking up, mm-hmm. you know, Willie Castro is probably rostered everywhere, but yeah. uh, you know, that's the whole point is there's not that many third base eligible guys we can pick up. Willie Castro is hundred percent rostered in the main event. So forget about that. Maybe yeah. in the twelves, you might have a little bit more time, but um, yeah, you're going to have to go after Lipscomb. You're going to have to go after um, Brewer du jour, you know, you know, done, uh, and all, you know, Oliver Dunn, I believe is yeah. his name. Uh, he made a great diving catch, but I don't think that really does much for us fantasy wise. Uh, point is, it's going to be hard to find third baseman out there. If you've got, you know, if you've got the, and I'm sure there's probably a, a roster out there. Someone had Lewis and then had young or something like that too. Probably yeah. not because they went around the same level young and maybe a round or two later, but still tough, tough to fill that, to backfill that, that position. I'm starting to find that I really want to get my corner to be third base eligible. Yeah, or ideally, <laughs> ideally both. But yeah, your corner to be third base eligible. I haven't, there's a few guys who, um, and these guys are gross, but like there's guys like Isaiah Kiner Falefa who I I actually have as like my last bench guy on a few few teams that because be, he is, but he plays. <laughs> um he plays he'll steal the odd base and anyways his appeal to me is that he's third base and outfield Mm -hmm. eligible and those are two pools where i find like if i can get a corner and outfield guy on my bench i don't know i find i have middles i have i have a lot of middles in my lineup like i even have extra middles in my lineup or in my utility spot and then I, i i don't have a hard time finding a middle or i didn't at the start of the year for my bench so um yeah. Anyways, if I can find someone who's corner and outfield, I find that's just in. Also, we've talked about this before roster construction. Like, again, I'm not saying that Kiner Fleff is someone that you really want, um, but he allows you to spend more bench spaces early in the season on pitchers because he covers yeah. corner. And, uh, and usually because you're right, a lot of us have two first basemen. So he covers all the, all the corner spots and the outfield. Yeah. So Duran is. 90% rostered. So you have to dig a little deeper. Oh, wow. Here's the third baseman in the main event that are less than 90% rostered. Tyler Freeman, Anthony Rendon, are both at 72. Junior Camonero in the minors and hurt right now at 67. Mm-hmm. Wilmer Flores, um, okay. 40% rostered. That's the type of guy you're picking up. Wilmer Flores is the exact on and off waivers all year guy who exactly. ends up the season with 17 home runs and no steals. Yeah. He'll, Flores will probably end the year hitting 250 with 17 homers on and off waivers all year. He's the kind of guy, but but keep going because maybe we can aim a little higher than that. Well, Trey Lips, Lipscomb, uh, we mentioned yeah. him. Okay, he, sure you can give him a shot. I'm intrigued. I'd like to see more, but uh, yeah. we'll have the week to watch him. This is a, this is a good time, you know. Yep. Pay attention to him a little bit there. Chris For Taylor. Sure. No, he, he's definitely in the uh, Wilmer Flores class, but yeah, same with thing. more strikeouts and more positions. Uh, John yep. Birdie uh, could get stolen bases. We'll always have John Birdie 2022 where he got all those yeah. stolen bases. Uh, DJ LeMayhew, he's going to be out a while. Josh yep. Rojas, he's playing tonight. Yeah, he, he plays most, like he plays against right. He's playing most days. Kiner Falafel. There we uh, go. We've got uh, there eventually. 12% rostered. Uh, Jack Zach McKinstry, second, third, Gross. short, outfield. That's useful, at least. 
Um, I don't think he does a whole lot, but at least he's no. there. I think uh, he just hit my cutoff of guys where I'm like, oh, forget everyone below that. Yeah. Graham Pauly, Kyle Farmer, yeah. uh, Curtis Mead. I'm trying to think because there's a couple of guys that aren't even in the majors. Like Noel Vimarte is 2% yeah. roster, whatever, or 4% roster. Well, that's all right because he's not going to be there for a while. Foscu, J, uh, J. Grizz isn't third base eligible. That's why we don't, I didn't listen to him. And he probably won't either. get there by the end of the week. That's the it thing. takes 10 like, games. Yeah. Yeah, he's not. Oh, sorry. I was thinking it was five. You're right. A 10 games. Only. In the yeah. NFBC, it's 10. Now, yeah, Yahoo, so it is five other yeah. platforms. And it's good to remember that we there's lots of different platforms out yeah. there. Tout Wars, it's five. My home league, it's three. Uh, we go 10 and three. So, you know, it's a little okay. bit more permissive. But then again, we have a three-man bench with no IR spot. So it better be permissive. Um, right. We also require someone to actually qualify at DH. It's not UT, it's DH. Um, so it, it's a little wrinkle that you have to pay attention to sometimes. Uh, so there you go. There you go. Uh, we are going to go ahead and talk a little Mike Trout. But before we do that, a uh, quick note from our first sponsor. It's a new baseball season. That means it's time for MLB DFS on Rival Fantasy. If you want to make everyday draft day, try out Rival Fantasy's daily and weekly MLB best ball. Draft a squad for single day slate or an entire week of games. Play the matchups and home road splits without worrying about waiver pickups or daily roster management. Drafting isn't your thing. Rival Fantasy has Fantasy Bingo, a salary cap free DFS game. Fill out your squad and try to complete achievements on your bingo card. Get five in a row or four and a corner to win. Then there's challenges. Pick which player will score more fantasy points in head to head matchups. DFS has never been easier. Go to joinrival.com slash rotowire or use code rotowire at sign up to get a $200 deposit match plus $25 in free entries. If you're ready to play fantasy sports made for sports fans, it's time to play on Rival Fantasy. All right. Mike Trout hit a home run yesterday. That is still flying. It was so impressive. Uh, just really, really just he's had a couple of launches already this season. Uh, fun stuff to watch. Do you have any regrets not having any Mike Trout? Went one for four today. No home runs today, but they did win. What, what else did he do today, Jeff? Did you notice in the box score? Oh, I do notice now a stolen base. Stolen oh, base. Ho, ho. it's a the Ron deal. Washington effect. I told you the Ron yeah. Washington effect. A Funny bigger deal than there. a home run. Yeah. Did you see the uh, Joe Sheehan note? Uh, the fun, the fun uh, Ron Washington note is going into yesterday's games. The Angels had one stolen base. <laughs> they, they've they've upped that since I think, but yeah. it's still pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, that uh, they I think they are up to four. I mean. Irrational exuberance. Joe Adele with two yesterday there. So, uh, yeah. but yes, Mike Trout with a stolen base today. Uh, Tyler Anderson pitching a gem. Yeah. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. No. Um, hey, I I I no, love Mike playing Trout. the Marlins, which right now means an automatic win. Well, so. I know it's crazy. I mean, I didn't put. I knew. You know. You know. I was down on the Marlins. I've talked yeah, about. Not, yeah, but you're right. But not that down. down. Yeah. I still thought their remaining starting pitching was still good. I it's just I, I doubted their offense. That part I was right about, but and, and Luzardo was fine today. Uh, he gave up three and five and a yeah, third, but he's fine. When you score one run against Tyler Anderson and friends. I mean, that's your sign that you got some problems. Yeah, and you know, like before we get two two down on the Marlins, like small sample. They also lost in 12 innings on opening day. They lost in 10 innings on mm -hmm. Sunday. Today's True. game is close three, one, like they're, they're not getting blown out. There's teams who look way, way worse than the Marlins that might mm -hmm. have a win so far, but, but look really bad. Um, but anyway, going back to the original question, do you have any regrets question, not getting Mike Trout? None. So I'm still not there. When I step back and thought about it, like, like, it, okay, if we did an April fantasy baseball league, mm -hmm. I would have drafted Mike Trout a lot higher right? Because the reason that I didn't draft Mike Trout, the reason you didn't draft Mike Trout is that he hasn't played in 120 games in a season going back to 2019. And he hasn't played in over 140 going back to 2016. So right. the, I won't have Mike Trout regret until September. Like I really can't because the way this, like there's no doubt in my mind that on a per game basis, Mike Trout can still be a really good player. My, just my concern is, is he going to play 80 games, 110 games, 125 games I, to justify taking him in the first five rounds? I need him to play 135 games, something like that. Like, like, so I can't really have Mike Trout regret yet. So right. Mike Trout can still hit home runs. Absolutely. Don't doubt that at all. I don't, I think Mike Trout's a better player than he showed last year. Um, 
Yeah, I think he can hit 30 home runs this year. Can he play in enough games to hit 40 or 45? We'll see by September. So I don't think I can have Mike Trout regret till September. Right. Unless, I guess, unless he was st- unless he stole 20 bases by the beginning of August. And I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Let me that ask would you- be a different kind of Mike Trout. Sure. Um, I will say this. He, he had six strikeouts and 15 plate appearances going mm-hmm. into tonight's game. Yep. He, he did not strike out, and this one went one for four. So it's now six six strikeouts and 19 plate appearances. That's still a 30% strikeout rate. Yep. So he's still yeah. doing the, the more strikeout thing, and I think yep. the batting average will be at risk because of yep. that. Um, I, I am encouraged by him running though. That was nice. He's, he's 50% of the way to last year's total already. So Ron Washington rules. Zach Neto doesn't have any stolen bases yet though. That was my like, Oh, he's the guy that's going to benefit for Zach Neto is not hurting. So uh, not hitting. He needs so, more hits before he yeah. can get more that, that, stolen that's bases. tricky part of that. He did. Neto did get a hit tonight. Uh, he won for three in this one here. So, yeah. uh, Tyler Anderson with the win in that one, by the way, seven shutout, uh, yeah. and, he sneakily had a pretty decent spring. I noticed he was getting some swings and misses. Um, I still think as, as uh, Nick Pollock on pitcher list calls him, he's still a Toby, but he was Toby plus tonight, at least. Any so. chance you would consider putting him in your waterfall? Tyler Anderson. I put yeah. him in my lineup in some leagues this week. dude. <laughs> <laughs> I have some problems though. Th- th- those are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, you put it not proudly, but you would put him in some lineups. Yeah, I did. Uh, he was like kind of a reserve pick in some places. I think I had him active in tout wars this week. Okay. AL only. That's AL only. Uh, I have one awful, no good, terrible draft champions league already with tons of guys hurt and others that lost job battles. So I had to put them in. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to claim victory on that, but it was nice to get a win. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, angels this week. Uh, they, I think they only have six, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they are yeah. off on Thursday. So two stepper next week for Tyler Anderson gets the home start against the Rays and then at Fenway. Yeek. No chance. Yeek. That, was, look at that, by the way, like just on that topic. So after this cushy Miami series, the angels go Boston, Tampa, Boston, Tampa. Those are the next four series. I don't think Boston's like amazing or anything, but it's right. just weird. That's just a weird stretch. Boston, Tampa, Boston, Tampa. So then they go Cincinnati in Cincinnati and then Baltimore. Like they've got a, like, that's not a, it's not the worst stretch, but it's not an easy stretch for sure. Compared to this series against Miami. I haven't forgotten. They got blown out the angels in their first two games against Baltimore. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sold on the angels at all. Yeah. Uh, I'm not either. I think they're really a terrible team. Not as terrible as the Oakland A's. Yep. Uh, the Oakland A's are just reprising the movie Major League. And I think we made this comment slash joke last year, and they found a way to be more of a farce. Now, it's not just the Estuary Ruiz thing, although it is that. Uh, just the excuses they gave. It's just so transparent that they had it, that there's a, another agenda there. It wasn't, oh, we want him to work on cutting down his strikeouts. Well, that's half the team is working on cutting down the strikeouts. He wore this stupid wristbands. Well, it's not stupid, but it's stupid for the, the A's to get out of bed in shape of that. Supporting, uh, I think it was a bar that was organizing a boycott slash protest. The players, you know, they're allowed to support the public that they play and not have to just kiss up to management. But Ruiz did the did the bad thing there, apparently, and got sent down, even though he's one of their better hitters over the weekend and not one of the players that committed one of the 11 errors that the A's have had in the first five games. 11 already. Just a farce of a team. Uh, you know, but brass tacks, are you dropping them? Or are you going to see if this lasts like a week or two? I think I, I if I had him, I'd wait a, w- a week or two, I think. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I put in our notes his his main event ADP was a little bit after 150. If you spent pick 155 on him, I think you have to hold him for a couple of weeks here and see what happens. My concern would be that he comes back at some point but still doesn't play every day. At which point like it's hard to put him in your lineup, but mm-hmm. I think the problem is is the people who drafted him in round 11, like not only did they use a high draft pick on him, but they probably based their steals expectations around that's him. That's the problem. Like that's, that's the problem. The They're problem. probably anticipating 65, 70 steals from Ruiz. That's why you'd take him in round 11. Cause you weren't anticipating a lot of everything else. So at that point, you only drafted another who knows, 80 steals, 90 steals, something like that around him. So, so you're on pace now to finish last in steals. If you don't get any steals from him. So, um, I do have an idea that we'll get to probably at some point soon about a possible temporary Ruiz replacement from another roster. Um, however, yep. um, 
I think you hold him for a couple of weeks and see what's going on. But my concern, if I have Ruiz, is not that he might spend a couple of weeks in the minors. It's that when he comes back, he may not play every day. Right. He's clearly out of favor with the team. Yes. Mark Kotze carried the organization's water with that, saying he barely made the team, the, the Ruiz barely made the team in the first place and wouldn't have but for Miguel Andujar getting hurt at the end of spring training. Yeah. I'm not sure and he's, and, that, and, but. and in the A's defense, like he's not good. Like last no. year, he had a 654. 654 OPS is really bad. Yeah. Like, like oh, it's yeah. not even like, like I it's agree. Like, there are guys around the majors who can't, who don't quite crack 700, but it's like 680, 690. Like they float around there, but like 654 is, that's not very good. So, so them saying, hey, a 654 OPS, even on a rebuilding team. A 654 OPS isn't good enough to stay in the majors. We want him to go spend more time in AAA, play every day down there. Right. Like, I could say that. You could say that. Like, I know we doubt everything the A's do, um, right. but that's reasonable. They've earned that. Yeah, yep. but that's re- but but that decision to say, hey, you had a 654 OPS. We didn't see any growth in spring training. Go and his defensive ratings aren't good either, by the way. Yeah, go that's spend a few thing. months in AAA and let's see, right. let's see if you can come around because. Yeah, you can't because we don't because truthfully, we don't care how many bases you can steal. Yeah, but it is kind of weird, though. Like they picked up uh, nepotism guy, Tyler Nevin, uh, who, you know, is the son of Mark Kotze uh, of Phil Nevin, who is like best friends with Mark Kotze. Uh, (laughs) They I think they played college ball together and came up through, the you know, so I mean. It, it, it's really kind of you know cheesy. Like that's the it's reason like the, you got to make room for Tyler Nevin. Yeah. It's like the um, A's are the A's are like your small town kids rep baseball team or something. Like yeah, pretty picking much picking up the coach's buddy's kid or something like that. That's that, but that, that kind of fits with the A's. Yeah, but that's Everybody why you don't. I I will say that's why you don't draft the Ruiz, Billy Hamilton, Malik Smith, Delano DeShields Jr. players of the world because mm-hmm. if they're not running, what do they do? Nothing. Um, and that, that means they also tend to not have great job stability. You know, the, the era where a team could support a Vince Coleman offensively is gone for the most part. Vince Coleman was not a good hitter. He was a stolen base guy that, you know, he could sometimes hit for average, but he was not that great of a ball player. He was a stolen base guy, period. Um, and the, today's game, you know, you need the power. You need to be the ability to, to advance the runner some and not just, slap yourself slap a, an empty 280 and then run run a lot because you notice those guys don't even like dominate the run scored category they don't even help you a ton there check out ruiz's numbers there they just didn't help you that much so um yeah this this has happened before it'll happen again uh and you know even when you can't stick on a bad franchise it, it's really a kind of a sign there too so i'm i'm really almost talking into dropping him if i would have had him but uh not yet i'd wait a couple of weeks is, is what i'm getting to here but uh we're going to talk about a potential replacement for ruiz in a second but first finally baseball is back this mlb season knock it out of the park with vivid seats and score great tickets to the biggest games of the year every fastball every home run every eye-popping play of your favorite team live and in person Plus, with Vivid Seats Rewards, you can earn rewards with every single purchase. Just buy 10 tickets, then cash in your credit towards your free 11th ticket. Talk about an easy win. And here's a pro reward tip. When buying tickets for your whole group, split the bill and make progress towards your free 11th ticket even faster. From behind the dugout to the upper deck, Vivid Seats has great tickets for all the 2024 games that matter to you. Visit Just visit VividSeats.com or download the app today. Vivid Seats. Experience it live. See vividseats.com slash rewards for terms and conditions. Also, we're on the Blue Wire Network. Here are their ads. Thanks for your patience there. Two years ago, Jake McCarthy was a big bonus for people who were trying, you know, making their stretch run, needing some, some needing stolen bases and getting a modicum of power. He was, I wouldn't say a league winner, but he was a league influencer. Um, man, that's in, in vogue with today's uh, parlance anyhow there. That's right. Um, so he got the call Alec Tom, uh, with Alec Thomas going on the IL. So are you interested in Jake McCarthy? Um, yeah, I think so. I think for teams that, that need steals, and they're, here we go. We got one in every league that just lost Ruiz. So, yeah, it, I mean, McCarthy from 2022 to 2023, about 600 at-bats, 49 steals. So. Okay. This is what we're talking about with Ruiz. Maybe not quite as much, but this is what we're talking about with Ruiz. Career 260 hitter, so hasn't hurt you in the batting average category so far. Last year, only at 243, but he hasn't hurt overall in his career. Career 260 hitter. Um, 
he's a little bit like Ruiz. Doesn't have power. Not a great overall player. He's going to hit low in Arizona's lineup. I think there's almost no chance of him consistently hitting high in that lineup because like he did that a little bit a couple years ago, but now that lineup with Corbin Carroll and they've added and Cattell Marte, they've added pieces. He's going to hit eighth or ninth. So he's not going to be a big asset elsewhere. But yeah, if you could use steals, um, I don't think he's someone you break the bank on, but I think he's someone who should, if he plays regularly the rest of the week, I think he's someone who should be added in every league, whether it's right. for 30 bucks or 50 bucks, or maybe if you're a Ruiz owner and you want to take a chance, like 70 bucks or something like that and hope you can get steals from him. But yeah, I think, I think he's worth adding. What about you? I think so too. Uh, McCarthy went uh, two for three so far tonight against the dime um, okay. uh, for the Dimex against Nestor Cortez and the Yankees did get caught stealing. I think it was a pickoff. He got caught stealing and he's been picked off. So yeah. McCarthy is struggling on the base pass so far, but I like that he's out there. I like that he's trying. Batting eighth also is noteworthy there. Uh, interesting. No Corbin Carroll in the lineup tonight. Um, yeah, it's just a day off, they said. Okay. Facing the lefty, give him a day off. It's early. It felt early in the season to me to give him a day off. but Well, lefty and Cortez, so maybe I can see that. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they Diamondbacks are three and two. They haven't had an off day yet, so I guess I can see it there a little bit. But uh, Yankees may be finally losing for the first time. We'll see. They've rallied before, though, so uh, we won't write this one off. But mm-hmm. Zach, Zach Gallon pitched great tonight. Six shutout against the Yanks. Uh, six Ks, three walks, three hits. Uh, you know, some people might have benched Gallon just because of the matchup. I don't actually. I don't think anybody did because if you have Gallon, he's your ace or your number two at worst. Mm-hmm. Um, as Nick Pollock would say, aces are going to ace. So uh, I, I think you guys got to leave him in there. Uh, I'm a, you know, you know, I'm a I have big love for Nick Pollock. I love uh, what he does over yeah, at Pitcher absolutely. List, especially with his. You know, he he just is grinds the content every single day with the pitchers. I've got to love that there. So just mm-hmm. highly recommend checking that out when you get a chance. Uh, but anyhow, so. McCarthy is going to draw some bids. He's definitely going to draw yep. some bids. Yep. Uh, I like. Okay, who do you like better, Jake McCarthy or Victor Scott as a pickup? Jake McCarthy. I, I worry with Victor Scott that he hasn't gotten off to a super hot start, and Lars Newtbar is playing in the minors right now. We're, we, yeah. So I, I agree. Let's let's exhume McCarthy. I, I was kind of the uh, member. I was kind of last week that not that high on Victor Scott guy too. So. Yeah. So I'm not like, that's not a victory lap by me, but I just wasn't that in on him and he hasn't done anything to change my mind. I just worry that they're going to get healthy and he needs more time in the minors. Sure. McCarthy sure. just looks like he, at least for a few weeks, he could help you out. I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. So uh, Victor Scott one for three so far against the Padres. I think he's only gotten one stolen base so far. Uh, he's hitting 143 yeah. despite that one, one, three. So that uh, one for three. So, mm-hmm. um, uh, there you go. I and I'm seeing a note that uh, uh, Walker might have just blew the game open. Uh, so we're we're gonna watch that there. Okay. Um, we'll watch and see what happens with that. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm a little bit behind on my uh, my box score there. So for what it's worth, um, team that's maybe as big of a joke as the A's is the Rockies. Got shut down by Javier Assad tonight. Javier Assad. Yeah, they're like. The did Rockies. you have him active anywhere? No, I thought I did, about it actually. actually. I'm getting I there. Did. You did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one league only. Um, and it was another one of those draft champion desperation plays. So okay. I think I've actually, I actually cut, I drafted and cut Assad in labor. So don't mm-hmm. pat myself on the back too much. I might, might break in a, a shoulder or something like that. You know, how it's not, you know, it's just, yeah. Uh, but it just shows uh, the Rockies. They're just, they're, they're a tough spot right now. So, they lost 12 to two. Kyle Freeland got torched again today. Um, that's two torchings, and he hasn't even gotten to Coors Field yet. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So the, the the Rockies offense, so they had one game where they faced Tommy Henry, who probably shouldn't be in a major league rotation with the Diamondbacks. They got nine runs. Outside of that game, in their other five games, they have four, five, six, seven runs. Seven runs in their other five games. Um so in their last three games, they have three runs. Like they are right now on the road, abysmal offensively to the point where, like you said, like maybe, maybe Assad shows you should start anyone against them. Like everybody other than Henry, everybody has shut them down. I was going to give Shoto Imanaga a lot of credit for shutting them down yesterday. And then I kind of paused and was like, meh, it's the Rockies on the road. I need to see him you know, against Tampa later this week or something like to really believe in them. Like, like yeah. I'm not, I don't not believe in them, but this isn't going to move the needle for me. So 
yeah, yeah. The Rockies, they're going home on Friday for a week, but when they leave again, I, I think I'm all over almost maybe anyone who faces them. Yeah. I, they come, I, they come to come to Toronto actually after they leave that for the Jays home opener. Yeah, absolutely. Or not, uh, sorry, not home opener, but part of their first home stand. Nolan Jones went 0 for 4 with three strikeouts tonight. He is down to 083, 122, 208 as his triple slash so far. He was kind of a lightning rod sort of guy uh, yeah. in draft season. And so far, it's, and again, so far, they haven't played in cores yet. The critics have been right, but uh, pretty ugly. I mean, I know the weather's terrible in Chicago right now, and Arizona's yeah. not a hitting park necessarily, although it didn't seem to hurt the Diamondbacks when they were up against yeah. the Rockies pitchers. Uh, just, just, what are the Rockies even? What are they? Why do they exist? What do they do? I mean, just uh I like I they, I feel bad for the, the Rockies fan base, which is extremely loyal, beautiful ballpark. Yeah. Uh I even like the purple uniforms. I just just can't stand Rockies management. Just can't stand what they've done with that team. They may be the most pathetic. Like the A's are the most vilified, but yeah, like at least the A's ownership has a plan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like their plan is to run the team into the ground and move them, but at least they have a long-term plan. Like the Rockies have, le- and and like the White Sox are down on their luck right now. The Rockies are to me on like another level right now where yeah, just mismanagement after mismanagement. I know it's hard to find a pitching staff for that park, but, but they can't even find well, What about the right lineup now. though? They used to be able to hit. That's it. Yeah. To, the Rockies used to be able to hit really well at home and okay on the road. Like they used to have good hitters. And now it's just the Nolan Jones thing will be a lightning rod all year. I'm not victory lapping on him yet. I don't have any shares, but like just to, to invest too much in a guy who had a 400 Babbitt last year, even, even with Coors Field as his home field. But to me, that felt aggressive. Um, you know, like I know yeah. what the, I see the potential, but just a 400 Babbitt last year is just really hard to, hard to forget repeat, but even come close to repeating. Yeah, I love that everybody got on him to try. Hey, you got to sign somebody. So they signed Chris Bryant. Oh my God, Chris Bryant, zero for the season, zero for two tonight. Uh, z- z- you know, he did. Uh, did he get hit by a pitch or something? Did he get on? Yeah, you because know, he only had two at bats, uh, official at bats. I see. Uh, you know, uh, he got on base somehow where he didn't get charged in that bat. But uh, anyways, ugly, ugly stuff there. I love Brendan Rodgers. People- I saw one. the I saw the the Chris Bryant spray chart tweeted out tonight. Which oh, is no. blank. People have been doing that with I heard saw a Rendon one where they yeah. tweet that out and it's just a blank diamond. <laughs> <laughs> I can't I, I find oh, it funny boy. every time. I'm still buying oh, it. It's not gonna yeah. last long, but I'm still buying it. Brendan Rogers, 120, 120, 160. Nolan Jones, 083, 120, 208. Chris Bryant, 0, 200, 0. That's your two, three, four hitters tonight. Uh Ryan McMahon's hitting 400. Elias Diaz, 176, 222, 353. Ezekiel Tovar hitting 211. Toglia is playing first base tonight, hitting 250. And he he was their one homer guy. He had a, he had a home run, but uh, rough, rough look there. Um, I do like to make fun of the Rockies, but I feel bad for their fans. It's just awful. Can you start any of these guys when they're on the road? I would say McMahon because you probably Jones. don't have a replacement. Jones, Jones. and Jones is around five. I mean, Jones, you got us. I mean, maybe he's going to sneak a stolen base. Maybe he run into one, but runs into one. Uh, but man, it's rough. It's rough. Um, I, I think one of my favorite things is zero Rocky starting pitchers ever get drafted now. Uh, just like no, not even like a draft champions. They're just toxic. Uh, they're, and they're just that, you know, at least you had like, oh, well, you can at least start this guy on the road. Kyle Freeland used to be that guy, but he's devolved, unfortunately. I mean, Coors just wipes out every pitcher. It's it's really sad. Okay. Um, but And I don't know if they're, it's it's fixable. You know, Elias Diaz, you're starting if you have him because you're not going to find a better catcher probably. But I guess. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's awful. All right. Got to get that taste out of our mouths. Uh, before we do that though, quick note from our friends at home run forecast. That'll help you a palate cleanser here. Can certain weather conditions lead to more home runs? The atmosphere can affect how far a ball baseball flies by 20%. Home run forecast measures the weather conditions at a ballpark to tell us if the atmosphere is good or bad for ball flight during a game. An index value that rates the air is created for each game and ballpark. And it is displayed on a scale from one to 10. 
Home Run Forecast premium site offers index values by the hour for each game. 24-hour forecasts, wind direction and speed, and even whether the roof will be open at certain stadiums. Home Run Forecast is offering a special for the start of the season. You can get access to the premium site for the entire season for only $28, a savings of nearly 30%. Go to homerunforecast.com slash rotowire now to sign up. One place that does have the that did have the roof closed today was Milwaukee, and I, Milwaukee was getting snow today. It's kind of wild. At least they were scheduled to. I don't know if they actually followed through like that, but um, they are four and zero. Fred, three game, three wins against the Mets, and now they beat the Twins today. Abner Uribe has three saves. Bryce Terang is running all over the place. Uh, is there any signal or is it noise so far? Any, any takeaways on the Brewers' hot start? Um. Well, the Abner, well, from a fantasy perspective, the Ad, Abner Uribe stuff is so significant. And I know he didn't get all their saves, but that's because he needed a day off. He's like, he's their closer. So, yeah. So, and is has a chance to be like this year's like best, you know, round 25 on pick or waiver wire in the first run through grab. Um, he could be huge, like, especially because he can also strike batters out. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think... I, there's even like a non-zero chance that he just remains their closer when Devin Williams eventually comes back. Like, right. like Williams could become their closer again for sure, and you could just get half a season out of him. But there's also a chance that if he's just cruising when Williams comes back, they're like, yeah, let's just leave him. Williams, you work the eighth inning. Or like, let's just kind of mix and match, and, and your rebate still gets enough saves in the second half if he's pitching well and everything to stay in lineups. And the Bryce Terang is really interesting. I don't think I have any shares of Terang, although he was kind of always on my list late in drafts. Um I don't know. I wasn't really looking for cheap speed, but right. there was an easy path. The projection systems didn't like him, but no. there was an easy path to see Terang. Like he got 26 steals last year and 404 at bats. So it was easy to see how, if he just played a little more, he's a 30 steal guy. Yeah. Now, will he hit well? Well, going into tonight, he had a 625 Babbitt. So um, he's not going to hit this well. You know, his Babbitt is still, his Babbitt is now 700. So. Yeah. Like things are like things are gonna are gonna cool off for him, obviously dramatically. He's hitting five hundred right now, but but right. he could be a base stealer all season. He could get those thirty steals. Two and two two more stolen bases a he's price yeah. training has six stolen six bases tied for the major league lead. Willie Adamas had a, a another steal today. Jake Bowers got caught. That was the first caught stealing for the Brewers. Everybody is running. They are what we thought Ron Washington would do to the Angels. They're just running. Pat Murphy is the manager there now, yeah. new manager. He was Craig Council's bench coach, so it's not like this is this totally like new setup here. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm impressed uh, with their their start. Granted, I think it's kind of like being impressed with the Pirates start, though. I I don't want to get too excited yet, mm-hmm. but and I'm. I'll, you know, don't want to get too far behind if you're the Reds or the Cardinals or the Cubs, though, because, uh, you know, both the Brewers and the Pirates are undefeated so far. The powerful yeah. NL Central. Don't mess with the NL Central, Fred. The uh, the interesting thing with the Brewers to me is the Brewers always seem to be able to find ways to pitch. And again, it's so early. They yeah. always seem to be able to find ways to pitch um, in three of their four games. They've allowed two runs or less. Yeah. So, which is what's really driving them. Like we've talked about the closer and we've talked about, you know, a base stealer. What's really driving them is that is their pitch, their starting pitching so far in the sense that they won three, one, they won four, one, and they won three, two. They did have a seven, six win, but the other games it's been the pitching that's, you know, for who Corbin, Corbin burns who like they've been able to, to, uh, to find starting pitching so far. We'll see if that can really continue or if it's just a blip on the radar at the beginning of the or season. Or it's but... facing the Mets three games as well yeah. your four games. That might yeah. have something to do with it too. Although the Mets lineup, like we talked about this before the season started, like the Mets lineup isn't the Braves lineup, but it, it's not supposed to be pathetic. Like, but it was. It, it has been. It, well, it was in that series. And, uh, and Lindor you know, is not hitting, too. So that makes it Lindor even worse. Lindor is very much not hitting. I, and, <laughs> I was I, looking I'm up today. That one. Yeah. I was looking up today players with no hits. And he is not one of them. But he's the very next guy. He has one hit. Yeah. And uh, he's the Four lowest games, batting though. average. Other There's five qualified hitters with no hits. Ryan Jeffers is one of them, by the way, who I think you have on a lot of teams. Yes, I do. So we got the day off today. Yeah, They played so four games. He's played three. I'm going to take a chill on that one. I'm fine. Yeah, whatever. It's early. But anyways, Lindor is next as far as batting average goes at 0.63. Mm-hmm. Uh, Evan Carter, by the way, is a guy with no hits, which I find. But he does have a stolen one. base. I didn't he know does. he had no hits so far. Wow. He actually has a 318 OBP. He actually has six walks. Good grief. So so I'm not maybe panicked. I'm not panicked on him. The other one's bums. Chris Bryan, Anthony Rendon. 
Joey Gallo so far is the only qualified player with no hits, no runs, and no RBIs. He, Not that he's in anyone's lineup. Yeah. Yeah. Evan Carter batting third while doing this too. That, yeah. that, that caught my, He'll that, probably come. So how about that. this? He has no hits, but he has five runs scored. <laughs> it's, it's because <laughs> Adelise Garcia is batting behind yeah. him. Yeah. And he's and, walking and in front of six him. Walks. Yeah. 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 So anyways, they'll all come around. But back to your point, Lindor, four, uh, one for 16. Brandon Nemo also one for 16. Jeff McNeil, more crying than hitting, one for 12. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Anyways, really slow start for the Mets. They'll probably turn around. I don't think that lineup's totally pathetic, but I'm interested to see if the Brewers, again, can pitch better than like they're a little bit of like like a National League Rays type thing where you look at their team and you're like, well, Freddie Peralta is good, but like the rest of it, meh. But so far, they're off to good starts. Yeah, they are. As far as their um, pitching goes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, let's talk a little White Sox today. And let's talk a little Garrett Crochet has looked good mm-hmm. in two starts. The second one being against the Braves. You know, I didn't see that one coming. Although he looked good against the Tigers. Really good against yep. the Tigers. Yeah, but this is a big one. Like compared to the Tigers, like the Braves, like like that's as tough as it gets. Seven innings, eight strikeouts, four base runners, one run allowed, a solo homer. Um, like that is that. Like I say, that is that's as tough of a lineup as it gets to go seven innings, one run. Like not a lot of pitchers are going to do that this year against Atlanta. Some will, but right. not a lot of pitchers are going to throw seven innings with one run or fewer against the Braves this year. So. And eight strike, like that is a real, this is a really impressive start. I know there's a lot of questions about how many innings he'll throw this year, but for now he is like an absolute lineup lock. And I bet he was benched in some leagues this week. Cause people saw, I don't know. I don't, do you think maybe in some 12s? I don't know. Yeah. I, I can I, see. Uh, no, I, I absolutely. Cause I can even a 15, I'd consider benching him because it's the Braves. I it's want right. the- And he was so good last week, but like it's one start. It depends, yeah. obviously, what your options were. I guess the only thing that would have kept him in is Sunday. He was a two-star guy, and the next start's Kansas City. You know what? I'm going to backtrack yeah. on that. I think a lot of people probably just sucked up the brave start to well, say, let's find out. We can to look say, hey, this guy could get me 15 strikeouts this week with the Royals start second. Like, I'm, I'll go for it. So, Garrett Crochet in the 15-team main event yeah. was 86% started. Okay. So, the odd you know, 100% person. rostered, but yeah. 86% started. So, 14% so. benched him. Yeah. Yeah. It mostly started. Anyways, this is really impressive. Now he's like, like full foot on the gas until unless we see something different. Like, well, like I said, like, we'll see whether how much of the six months he can be in the rotation for because of an innings limit eventually. But ideally, if like what would be ideal for fantasy managers would be if Crochet just started in their rotation for like four months and they just shut him down. Yeah, like just let him roll and then let it start his off season in August. So many converted relievers this year uh, yeah. in rotations yeah. that are very interesting. AJ Puck had a terrible first start. Yeah, there's Jordan Hicks. There's Michael King who was converted last year, but only half the first the season. Terrible first start because he had a relief appearance in Korea. But yeah. His first start, but he got a win wild. out of that. Yeah, he got a win in Korea. That's right. But then his last his start, he was actually gifted a win. The pottery scored like crazy and he couldn't finish five innings. I think he walked seven batters, something like that. Mm-hmm. Really bad. Six or seven batters. So mixed results yeah. from these converted relievers so far. Yeah. A uh, really good player. Steven Japanka benched him in the league that uh, Jason Wanick and I are in mm-hmm. for the main, in the main event. Japanka is a, like he's won like 12 terrific. individual main event leagues. Yeah. Terrific player, terrific yeah. person, super nice guy. I say his process was right here. You know, we we're talking, James Anderson and I were, we we're talking about this on Sirius XM today. Uh, just you want to avoid the Dodgers, avoid the Braves. Uh, you know, maybe because it was on, Braves on the road and the weather was awful in Chicago, maybe. Mm-hmm. But ugh, is that, that's that's really a thin reed to grasp. But and it didn't work out yesterday uh, for the the, the the White Sox. So it doesn't always work. You now go figure that it didn't work for. Uh, oh, who was the awful starter yesterday? It doesn't matter. Um, Mr. I don't miss bats guy. Um, so anyways, so tough decision to make there. The fact that you got a second start, you know, I think you're getting a second start with crochet. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Crochet two. Yes. You get it at, against at KC. Yes. Um, yeah, I think that could work. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I think that why it's why people left him in. So, mm-hmm. and then he gets home start against the reds next week too, which reds on the road. Aren't that bad. Reds and Cincy. I don't want to touch, but, uh, anyways, uh, speaking of that, uh, Spencer Turnbull, uh, had a reasonably good start against the Reds tonight. Phillies won. Bryce Harper came alive with uh, n- uh, three homers, 9-4 uh, win there for uh, the Phils. But 
Spencer Turnbull, is he someone that we're going to be considering to pick up in mixed league formats? Five innings today, seven Ks, no earned runs, no walks, only three hits allowed. Any port in a storm, I guess so. Starting pitching is hard to come by. I guess so. I, I, I guess you hear the hesitation in my voice, so I guess I'm yeah. not, not really sure of it. Um, he could get, they have an off day. He could get skip or push back next time through. Um, yeah, I, I think so. I think he, I think, I don't think he's a big bid, but I think we've seen a lot of Spencer Turnbull and in his career, like in his career and most of it's not really anything notable, but he could be a two-star pitcher next week. So he could be an at St. Louis home to Pittsburgh. No, it's okay. I, I could do that. I mean, it's I don't okay. like the at St. Louis part. That was pretty deadly at yeah. the end of the year last year, but while the weather's cold, uh, maybe you can pull it off. Yeah. And the weather was horrible in Philly today. Like if I think it was like yeah. 30 degrees and windy and rainy and just, bleh. yeah, just awesome. Just awful. I, I I think he's like a under twenty dollars. If you have room on your bench, grab him. And if you want to use him for the two step, fine. If you don't want to use him for the two step, maybe you throw him on your bench and just see mm-hmm. what next week looks like. For like I say, but at that point, you're paying ten bucks, fifteen bucks, something like that. Right. Yeah. I mean, and there's a risk that we're gonna get whipsawed here. You know that we're yeah. gonna run into that, and you know, on both sides of this uh, equation here, where yeah. you know we. we you know, we got hit hard by Bailey Ober. So, okay, let's bench Ober and start Turnbull. And then Ober fix, figures it out and shut and shoves. And meanwhile, Turnbull gets crushed. You know, now, now that people haven't seen Turnbull in a while, uh, maybe not. And, you know, they, they figure him out a little bit. Or maybe just they figure out someone other than the Reds. By the way, let we we got to talk with the Reds. We got to do a little talk here. Um, unfortunately, Elliot De La Cruz looks terrible out there right now if you look at what elliot you know he, he had one strikeout tonight that gives him 10 strikeouts in 22 plate appearances i believe that's awful yeah and this would be wouldn't be so concerning if if it wasn't like exactly what he looked like in the second half of last season right so like we've got now a again like a longer sample size of him striking out a ton, struggling to, he is hitting for average. He's hitting 250, but it's come with a, like a Babbitt around 600. And like, it's not going to last if he keeps striking right. out this much, let's put it that way. So, um, you know, we talked earlier in draft season about the possibility that he could get sent down. Then the Reds had a bunch of injuries. So he's not going to get sent down. Uh, well, I guess he still could, but he, he's less likely to get sent down. Um, he, he certainly got more of an opportunity to stay up, but we never, people didn't talk a lot about like, what if he stays up and he just he doesn't play well? Right. What if he just hits 200 and he steals bases and hits the odd home run, but he hits 200 and kind of kills you overall. Um, yeah. I mean, we'll see where it goes, but there's, I don't know if you drafted Ellie early. Well, if you drafted Ellie, then you draft him early. If you drafted Ellie, mm-hmm. I think you've got to be worried. Yeah. Because, uh, because this is just last year's second half continued. It is. It really is. And you know, he, he's got one triple, but otherwise he's not hitting the ball with authority either. That's the other problem is when he, he does have like five hits, one hit per game. Uh, but it's just Ellie's just striking out so much. And you just mm-hmm. and, and just watching the at bats. If you watch the at bats, you can see just how uncomfortable he looks up there. He's he's trying to bun a lot now, Fred. I know the Reds are probably telling him, OK, you got to use your speed. Put one down every once in a while. It's like every game he tries to do at least one bunt. And it, I don't want to see that. I think that's just terrible. I don't want to see that at all. So I, I, I'm just, ugh, I'm really so, worried about that. So we don't talk, we talk because we talk NFBC a lot. I find we don't talk a lot about trading. Um, so NFBC, you drafted Ellie, you're stuck with them. Good luck. If yeah. not NFBC. So if you were in our labor league or something like that, do you have any opinion on that? If you're the Ellie owner, would you sell low a little bit to maybe get out from under this possible mistake? Is there any chance you would? I don't think I would. I low yet. Probably not the way we just talked about him. I don't feel like so. I, I would you as, trade Ellie for Francisco Lindor right now. I, I would, would. I would. Yes. I, well, yes. I would have drafted Lindor L over Ellie. So yes, yes. Snap yeah, ball. I mean, yeah. Ellie's ADP was earlier. So I'm aware of that, but not he wasn't a, not about he, he, the JDP, the Jeff draft position. It wasn't that way. There, Gunner so. Henderson. Would you trade him for Gunner Henderson right now? Yes. 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 Um, let me go down lower. Uh, Bobachet. Would you trade him for Bobachet? Yes. Sore neck and all, I would. Although, yeah. here's here's where I, I might, I should pause. 
because Boba Shed, I don't think is going to run much. Um, and that's so I, it might be a roster you're, construction. You're, you're almost that trading point. him that, at that point, though, just to settle, just to settle for like yeah. a good, good fantasy player. Yeah, not, yeah that's not true. A great, would you trade him for Jazz Chisholm? Mm, well, Jazz Chisholm's outfield only now, so that becomes a lot of bit, a lot harder of a question. Your boy Manny Machado. My boy, because I drafted well, him, him in the main. main. Event. You took him in the main. Yes, I He's took him guy. at ADP. He's my every boy. Every time he every time he gets a hit now or a homer, I always think that's the first thing I think. I like, oh, Jeff took him in the main. He's probably happy. Did he? Did he homer today? Uh, oh, I, oh, don't let me get your hopes up. I'm just All saying right. when that happens. He's done. It's happened. No, he's over. Manny Machado's over for today. So would you trade him for? Too. Would you trade him for Manny Machado? Who's like as I think like predictable is it's kind of be like, you know what I mean? Like he's probably going to hit about two sixties, probably going to hit about 30 home runs. I might steal no yeah. bases. That seems like, about right. That seems about the right price. I think, me. I think I wouldn't maybe go, I think I might hold and just cross my fingers before I stop there, but everyone above that Altuve. Right. Well, and here's the thing about Manny Machado is he's got ultimate job security. Whereas Ellie does not. Yeah, I know. Ellie is batting six. By the way, Spencer Steer bats seventh against righties, and that's just wrong. Just yep. get him higher in the lineup. You know, you've got this guy that's hitting I-470. Don't bat him seventh. Bat him higher, please. You know, ugh. El- Ellie could go right down to bat ninth, be your wraparound guy. I think that's the I think that's the likely move that's happening is to move them down in the lineup. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they they got your guy. Uh, the Reds got your guy Santiago Espinal there as kind of mm-hmm. a stopgap utility guy because they had. Here's the thing: the Reds sneakily had all these shortstops, and now they don't. Yep. Uh, Marte is suspended, obviously. Yep. Uh, Barrero is now a Texas yep. Ranger. Matt yep. McLean is out, obviously. Um, yep. Even Edwin Arroyo, one of their top minor leaguers, is out for the season with an injury. So yep. they, they really kind of put themselves in a spot there where they kind of just have to ride or die with Ellie. And again, it's five games. Yeah. So I, you know, things can and, change. And for those listening who are saying, like, you guys are crazy, like, it's five games for sure. We're, these are two people talking who didn't draft Ellie anywhere. Correct. Right. So, like, so. Well, I don't know. I have one league. I did okay. draft him in my okay. last beat, Jeff Erickson, about pick. Okay. 30 it was the third round okay and it was a total fomo pick there's no yeah. and, and the fact that he slipped a little lower than he usually goes it was one of those like okay the price is fine now i have a i have two other guys i have a pitcher and a, i have a start i have i had strider and then some stud hitter I, and I, so many leagues dude i they all run together at this point in time but point is i felt like okay construction wise i can do this here and i can withstand that a little bit oh austin riley who actually hasn't done much yet but he mm-hmm. will he started slow last year too. Yeah, I, here's one more interesting one. He and this guy's also off to a terrible start, but Nico Horner, he steals bases like crazy, and mm-hmm. and he usually hits for average. He hasn't, mm-hmm. but it's four games. Like Nico Horner is a career what like two eighty? Oh, it's two seventy eight. He's a career. I think he was probably two eighty before the season started. He's about a career two eighty hitter. So would you trade him for Nico Horner? Nico Horner, Horner will probably get you ten homers and forty steals. And I'm not baseball. so sure about the 10 homer part. I well, got nine last year and 10 the year before. Right. So, I, I mean, but about 10, about a boot. <laughs> uh, Nico Horner's hard contract rate. His, his like yep. batted ball metrics are terrible. Yeah. But he's a career 278 hitter. So he's going to hit for a better average than Ellie. He's True. He's still about 40 not bases. Like out a thousand times. So there's that. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyways, these are, these are the dilemmas. People who drafted Ellie were more optimistic than us. So they probably won't do some of these things. Mm-hmm. Um, th- they might do the Altuve, like the Gunnar Henderson ones, but the other people probably won't do those ones. I don't know. He, right. he should be, I write those weekly Yahoo trade articles. He should be one of the most traded players. Um, yeah. He should be one of the most traded players in the next little while. Well, I do love one thing I do love about y- playing on Yahoo leagues is you get access to the trades that have happened. That's right. Um, and I love that you can search any player and you can see what his trade market has been, how often, you know, ha- added, dropped, who, how often they've been traded. You can see all those things. Um, you know, I, and out of rhythm, fancy sports makes a good point. I don't think you should get rid of a trade Ellie right now, but my point is I had those guys ranked ahead of Ellie to begin with. So if I was getting a guy ahead ranked ahead of him to begin with, and you know, fit positionally, well, of course I do it. Uh, but um, if if I'm buying, if I'm selling low and I'm getting someone that I had ranked below Ellie, well then, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go. 
I'm not going to do that sort of thing. I don't do that. That's, that's more what I'm saying. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, you can say like, you should, like, I can see that you, you know, why would you want to get rid of them? You know, if you drafted them, I get that. That's what what I was saying. You and I wouldn't have drafted them. So that's why we would be quicker to get rid of them. But there's always degrees of selling low. Like we've definitely seen enough Mm -hmm. to the point where if you drafted Ellie in round two, you might be like, uh, maybe I should have waited at least one more round. Well, there's a bunch of hitters in that range. You could at least go out and make the offer. See if anyone else, um, Maybe the Estuary Ruiz, I like to think of these things creatively. Yes. Maybe the Estuary Ruiz owner would want to take a chance on Ellie right now, right? They're hurt yeah. for steals, right? Maybe they would take it. Maybe they'd be like, knowing sure, that I'll... they're kind of screwed on steals if they don't yeah, go. Yeah, they'd be like, whatever, I'll take a chance on Ellie. I just lost yeah. Ruiz. I'll give you a power hitter or something for. You know, for it, the thing is, you're going to have to get something commensurate with the draft value of Ellie to be able to pull that off. Um, that, I think that's the whole point. The Ellie yeah. manager should not be selling that low. I don't think um, if they, if they are, that means they didn't do the research on Ellie beforehand and they didn't realize right. this is part and parcel right. of what happens with him. Okay. Yeah. Let's wrap it up with Josh Hader. Blew the save against your blue Jays, blue Jays revenge, baby. That's right. Uh, Two, he gave up a two-run homer to Davis Schneider, you know, obscuring, you know, blowing a, a gem for Framber Valdez, who was much better in his second start than his first. Uh, gives Chad Green the win. Chad Green pit, got the last out of the eighth and then pitched the ninth. Yimi Garcia pitched the seventh. So it gives us a little bit of a hint, maybe how they want to handle the ninth inning while uh, wh- while Romano is out, although I think Romano will be back in short order. But yeah. uh, nonetheless, uh, hey, you know, very happy note for the Jays, although let's face it, they didn't hit until the ninth inning in this one here. It's just a lack of hitting generally in this game. Yeah, and base running um, for people who watch the game. Jose Altuve up one nothing in the bottom of the eighth, got picked off on third oh. um, with two outs. With two outs, so he may not have scored, but they had second and third with two outs. There's a bunch of weird things that happened in that half inning, mm-hmm. but the final th- weird thing that happened was he strayed way off third and Kirk after, like after he had received a pitch, like delayed and then kind of saw Altuve just like standing there in no man's land and threw back to third and managed to pick him off. So, um, and then who, so again, who knows if he would have scored, there were two outs. Right. Um, but it ended up, you know, the Jays next at bat, they managed to, to come back and get the lead and then green finished off. Hater now has taken the loss in his last two appearances. Um, so this time he gave up two run Homer, David Schneider last time out, he gave up one run against the Yankees and a four, three loss. Um, that's not, I'm sure what the Astros envisioned when they gave him this massive contract is that, you know, a few days into the season, he's already got four innings. He's already thrown four innings, but that he'd already have, he'd be zero for two, uh, no saves, two losses, no wins, uh, a little disappointing. I'm not worried about him. Yeah. So here's what I would like to dig into a little bit is like, was the velocity off Was you know, is it just, I mean, David Schneider, who's David Schneider? Take him deep, but you know, David Schneider is, is great against lefties. I know. I know. So, I, I, I have him in a league. He's in a wheelhouse for David Schneider and he can hit for power. He strikes out a lot, but he can hit for power. Yeah. It was his wheelhouse and Justin Turner had had a great game. He was three for three and he got a walk and got on base ahead of Schneider. There was a two out walk. Like he had two outs bases clean. Mm-hmm. That game was done. And then he gives up the walk to Turner. Um, you know what hit overall haters command or in control so far has been fine. I feel like just anecdotally when hater goes downhill, he starts walking everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, that hasn't happened so far this year. I, I, like I said, I'm not really, I think it was just good luck for the blue Jays. Bad luck for Josh Hader tonight. I'm not too worried about him. Yeah. It is kind of wild though, that he signed a just five-year annoying. deal at age 29. Never signed yeah. a closer to a five-year deal. That's I know. What I was told. Really weird. Yeah. Uh, I know. I, like, I thought he would get three years or something like that. Yeah. But uh, meanwhile, Jordan Montgomery can't get a sniff, although maybe that's just a Boris thing. I don't know. Yeah. And it, it's five years and 95. So it's less than 20. Per, it's it's around 20 per year. So it's a little bit different mm-hmm. than what the starters were asking there. But, right. Uh, anyhow. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't think there's big a big alarm here. Um, Presley is obviously the pivot followed by Brian Abreu. But I, I wouldn't. You know, maybe if you have, I mean, the thing is, Presley is rostered a lot of places anyhow. Yes, um, yeah. So it's hard to go ahead and, and do anything to deal with that there. And we've uh, seen a bunch of blown saves already around the league. 
I'm trying not to get worked up about, you know what I mean? Like Alexis Diaz has a, there was a bunch of them. All Alexis around. Diaz was awesome yesterday against the Phillies. Yep, so he's great. I, so he, that's that was what I mean. just I'm, the second appearance too. So, yeah, yeah. I'm trying not to get worked up about these guys sure. who have one bad outing, one blown save already. Um, yeah, I I'm think that should extend to starting pitchers too, like Bailey Ober and all the some of these disaster guys. Maeda, I'm worried about because the velocity was down, but it's also April or March. The Bailey Ober case. one yeah. was so bad. It was. <laughs> so it was. It was so I, I, ap I apologize to people who on this podcast I recommended drafting Bailey Ober. It's going to take a while to uh, to kind of clear the air. That, that, that one was so bad. Yeah. yeah, like so, there's there's bad like three inning six runs, and then there's what Bailey Ober did. Mm -hmm. like was it one and a third eight runs like it's yeah. so bad yeah. anyways i'm trying not to overreact to a bunch of these things i tried to set my lineups this week as though for the most part as though the first few days didn't happen right i think that's and, wise i think that's yeah. a smart thing to do just do it on the merits of how you evaluate the player yeah. and of course if they're hurt that's different you, you know if they're marginal to begin with and you look at the matchups but uh, and you can toy with the idea of benching Bailey over, but unless unless you're like just got a sick pitching staff, yeah, you got to mm -hmm. you got to just roll with them. Uh, I agree. Yeah, it yeah. Ha it does happen. I think that's that's the takeaway there. Well, I'll tell you, if we go back to De La Cruz. Like you drafted over, like you know, I mean, you're you're bailing off for one start, right? You know, I know it's a bad one, but you're bailing off. Come on, you drafted over as you're probably SP two or three. You know, I think you got to give him another start because you bench him after the one terrible start. He goes out this week and throws six innings, gives up one run, gets a win, and you're like, man, I didn't even get that. Right. So I right. think you, I think if you if you drafted him and believe in him, I, I sent Tanny Tanner Bybee out there, even though that one was really frustrating. Oh, he looks terrible. He I, looked I, terrible. He's the A's, A's. like yeah. really frustrating. But again, A's and Rocky Road, those are the two that you know, those are supposed to be the free square. Yeah, and that doesn't happen. Oh. But it. I left him in my lineup. I, I thought twice, but he's at Minnesota. Hopefully it's freezing cold and the ball doesn't travel anywhere. And right. He got a nice freezing start. cold can back. It can backfire you on you. As a pitcher. Yeah. Uh, I've seen that happen plenty of times. So yeah. anyways, all right, that's going to wrap up at today for us today. There a uh, good stopping point. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. I love all the chatter and the, uh, for those who are joining us in the live stream, really do appreciate that there. Thanks for joining us today. James Anderson is back at you again tomorrow. Thanks for listening to Rotowire. If you like this pod, please like, rate, and review, as always. Uh, and if you really like what we are having to say, check out what we have to offer on the site, rotowire.com slash pod. Get you a free peek behind the paywall. No credit card required. Just get a free two days. Take a look at it. Uh, kick the tires, and hopefully you like it and want to subscribe. All right. Thanks for listening to Rotowire. Have a good night.